This might be the world's most viral burger. It's juicy, it's packed full with flavors, and I'm gonna show you how to make it better. Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. You might remember the Flying Dutchman from all those viral videos where they stack a burger in between two slices of cooked onion. The idea was totally crazy and people loved that it was crazy. But in all honesty, you want to make a burger that is mildly serious and not for just viral purposes. You want something that tastes good, that you can actually enjoy. I'm just gonna add some big block to it and then light it up with a couple of fire starters. In about 10 to 15 minutes, the Big Joe should be red glowing hot, which means I can do some preparation work in the meantime. I got some chuck steak on the board. And for me, chuck steak is the best thing that you can have for making burgers. I also like brisket, but brisket's just way too expensive here in the Netherlands. So I just try and stay clear of the briskets. I'm going to slice up my chuck. I want about dice sized cubes. It doesn't have to be really precise since it's going into the meat grinder. If you have a butcher that will grind up the specific cuts that you really like, then I would recommend just doing that. Just ask your butcher for 20 to 80% fat to meat ratio, preferably like a nice chuck or something, or beef that has a lot of flavor that's not going to break the bank. All right, there we go. Just load it up. Here from the squeak is going to need some meat. If you want a nice firm consistency in burgers, you're going to not grind it once, but twice. If you want a real coarse structure, you're going to grind it once. The meat is prepared and as you can see, my big Joe is now screaming hot. So what I'm going to do is close the bottom vent to about a finger open and then close the lid, making sure that the top vent is all the way open. And by doing so, I'm going to retain all the energy inside the big Joe. All that ceramics is warming up and once I need it, all I need to do is open up the vents and start searing. I got one of those fancy burger presses that I use. Now, you definitely don't need this, but it's a lot of fun. I've got one sheet of bacon paper that goes on the bottom and then I'm going to pre-shape a burger. Now, this will hold a specific amount of meat, so it's very uh, limited to the size that you really want. All you're going to do is just put this on, take another sheet of paper and then press a little bit. But once you see the shape, it really is the perfect shaped burger. There you go, look at that. The thickness is absolutely spot on. And that's what I'm looking for. So this is good to go. When does a machine like this make sense? When you gotta make a lot of burgers and you want them all to be the same because then you know exactly how long you need to cook them for and it will all turn out exactly the same way. Of course, for the Flying Dutchman, you are going to need onions. Now, the difference between the original Flying Dutchman and the way I like to make a Flying Dutchman is by making the onion part of the burger. I am going to cook it in the same way that they do, but I'm just not going to use it as a burger bun. I love the whole idea of the viral video, but now I just want a really good Flying Dutchman burger, a real version. So we're going to take this seriously. You want these about half an inch thick. Definitely going to need that structure of a thick sliced onion. I am also going to need some herb butter, which I like to make myself. I just think the supermarket herb butter is not even on par. It's so far off what it should be and can be with fresh ingredients. And especially if you have something like chives, it is the thing, it is the main ingredient. And then a little bit of parsley. Parsley freshens things up. So you gotta take into consideration that you don't want too much parsley in your butter. Let's take that, put it in a bowl. About 100 grams of butter. Oh man, I gotta love butter. Butter's so amazing. Go in there, yep. A teaspoon of Texas barbecue seasoning. Now, Texas barbecue seasoning has garlic powder, onion powder. It just works magic. If you don't have Texas barbecue seasoning, you can use salt and pepper. A little trick that I use, if, that if, if it's cold outside and your butter is not really cooperating, you just take your hands, and I always have a couple of these barbecue gloves, you just take your hand and just start kneading it. It will turn the butter soft, but it will just speed up the process. See how the butter is turning soft in my hands while I'm kneading it? And now I've got my perfect compound butter. I'm gonna roll this up in a sheet of baking paper and then you can let it cool down again with absolutely perfect compound butter. 
The final piece of the pudding is making the burger sauce. Now, I'm gonna show you my burger sauce. I think it deserves a thumbs up. <laughs> this one is special. If you've seen the burger sauce like this before, then uh, big shout out to whoever uses this burger sauce. But personally, this, this is the one. Okay, I got two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. I'm gonna have one big teaspoon of chili oil. If you're like me, you can use two teaspoons, but it's gonna be spicy. The more you put in, the heavier it's gonna get. Of course, I'm going to need some honey to go with that to make it nice and sweet. If you want, you can replace the Greek yogurt with mayonnaise, but I just find the balance of the Greek yogurt freaking amazing. And then I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of the Tweety barbecue seasoning. There we go. I don't know what you can replace that with. Buy it on our website or you can make it yourself because the recipe is on our website too. Now mix this up and watch it turn into like a super crazy vibrant burger sauce. Forget what you know about burger sauce. <laughs> this is the one. All right. The good thing is that this can sit for a little while and the longer it sits, the better it becomes. If you can want, you can even make this a day ahead of time. Quick taste test. Oh, that's gonna make your burger special. Mm. And the last tip I can give you in preparation, always match up the size of the burger with your bun. So if I measure that, that's gonna be the perfect shape. As you can see, I still have plenty of charcoal left. It's glowing red hot. And all I need to do is put it in my grill grates, and then put in my Kamado Joe pan. Now you can use a cast iron plate or like a heavy skillet, but something that will retain heat. A nice way to know if it's hot enough is just to put some butter in. This is the compound butter we just made and just see if it melts. And that's why I like to start with the compound butter because it doesn't need the insane amount of heat. It just needs a little gentle heat. Otherwise you're just burning herbs. And when the butter starts bubbling, it means the moisture has evaporated and I can start to fry my buns. They don't need long, just need them crisp. That is a beautiful golden brown texture. That's what I need. I'm gonna remove that compound butter because that's gonna burn in my pan. You can see it's getting hotter now. I'm just gonna close the bottom band of the Kamada Joe that will prevent it from raising up even further. I'm actually going to need this amount of heat so that I get a good sear on the burger. And the funny thing is, we're gonna sear this burger in mustard. There we go, burger on. We want that mustard on the burger. All right, let's see how we're doing. Whoa. Pit Maastricht, Texas seasoning. A couple of slices of cheese. And now I'm going to close the lid because I got the cheese on. The burger is getting a good sear and I just want to lock in the heat and make that cheese melt as quickly as I can and retain as much moisture in the burger as I can. While all of this is going on, I'm going to put in a lump of butter. The onion goes in on the butter. I'm going to let it become soft together with the melting cheese. <laughs> <laughs> butter fragrance that comes off the burger. Because you can see how fast things are going, you know now why I do all that preparation work. So I don't have to do it while I'm actually cooking the burger. Time to start building up the bun. First burger goes on. Look at that. Sauce. Bun goes back on and then the top of the bun. Now, in my personal opinion, that is one delicious looking burger. And I think this is better than the one with the onions on the outside. But I'd love to know which one you'd rather have, the Pitmaster Rick's version or the original In-N-Out Flying Dutchman. That is one tasty burger. Oh, 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 oh. it is so voluptuous. It's insane. This definitely scores high on comfort food level. Mm.